One of the things that obviously we're seeing happening on a big collective level right now is something that I think a lot of us have either engaged in ourselves on a more micro level or been victims of on a micro level. And maybe for a lot of us, it's both. We have both perpetrated it and we've also been victims of it. And that is toxic positivity. And that's gonna be the first thing that I wanna talk about today, because of course, I'm seeing a lot of it. I'm seeing a lot of it in the online sphere. I'm seeing a lot of it in kind of like the wellness world and the spirituality world. Of course, it's also happening within families, within friendship groups, when you're talking to people about what's going on, what you're afraid of, etc. You might find that you come across at least one person who is practicing some form of toxic positivity and is trying to kind of convince you to get on the toxic positivity gravy train. Toxic positivity is essentially the insistence upon other people's performance of positivity. It's basically this big overgeneralization of things as generally being happy or optimistic or not as bad as they may otherwise appear. And when somebody in your midst is kind of bombarding you with toxic positivity, they're usually saying things like, it will all be okay in the end. You really shouldn't worry so much. Let's look on the bright side of things. And this very much tends to minimize and invalidate people's often very legitimate fears and concerns. And it stamps out any ability for people to have a sense that they can talk about the spectrum of their feelings. So you might sometimes feel quite positive, quite optimistic. You might have moments of hope or elation. You might actually have moments where you can really enjoy certain aspects of what is happening to you during this time or what is going on with your world during this time. But you might have other moments where there is despair, there is helplessness, there's fear. Maybe you're worried about other people for whom those feelings are very prevalent. So if you're in the midst of, of a person who is bombarding you with toxic positivity, they're basically insisting that you cut out those areas of feeling and concern that are uncomfortable, really, for the person who's shilling the toxic positivity. It's really about that person not being able to deal, perhaps, with the more shadowy elements of what is going on. And sometimes also people who are very sort of forceful with toxic positivity, they are the people who think they are really being very helpful by trying to convince everybody to get onto the happiness and optimism gravy train. But actually a lot of the time people wanna talk about the fullness of their experience. So as you're listening to this, you might be thinking, oh, okay, I'm somebody who's actually trying to push toxic positivity. Or you might be one of those people who is the victim of somebody's toxic positivity, or you are at the very least feeling as though you are seeing a lot of toxic positivity in your online sphere, and you might be feeling like you need to pull away from it in some sense. You either need to stop pushing it, or you need to stop being in receipt of it. And I think that's a very valid and legitimate thing to do in our you know, collective COVID-19 shadow work, if you will, because toxic positivity is something that can be so damaging anyway when we're looking at just our individual personal situations but when we're looking at something that is involves basically everybody and most people are in some way affected by it toxic positivity can really stunt conversation and stop people from being in the fullness of their experience and they might therefore feel shamed into taking the negative aspects of what they're feeling into themselves and we all know how that can go that can be very dangerous it can lead to suicidal ideation it can lead to self-harm it can lead to just really low moods and just really um you know isolating yourself away from people in terms of like conversationally isolating of course we should be isolating if you're watching this at the time of upload um but conversationally isolating pulling away feeling ashamed uh because we are not constantly positive so i think that's something we can be shadow working within ourselves and we can also recognize when somebody else is coming at things with this toxic positive lens and we can make sure that we do not feel shamed or policed by that toxic positive lens. Sometimes we can invite somebody who is engaging in toxic positivity to have a more real and raw conversation. And sometimes you might find that you're in a situation where that's just going to antagonize a person. And really you just need to decrease the amount of time that you spend in conversation with that person because they feel that the toxic positivity is part of their, their coping mechanism, their setup. And I'm not saying that somebody who is feeling very optimistic at this time, very hopeful, very happy, is engaging in toxic positivity. It might be very real for them that they feel positive or hopeful or happy. The problem is more when they expect everybody else around them to be the same, or they, they kind of have this message that they put across that the only way to deal with this suitably or healthily 
is to be as upbeat as they are and as positive as they are and that might really not be working for you and it might not really be healthy for you. I think we can all definitely afford to have a look at what it is that we are ingesting online. I know that a lot of you, if you're watching this video, you're probably also taking in a lot of information from, you know, the health and wellness arena, spirituality, um, you know, just different things like that, self-help, personal development, inner growth, you know. And I think we can afford to be having a look at what we are ingesting in those arenas and say okay this is actually not help helpful for me it's something that is not necessarily positive now if i happen to be one of the voices that is not positive for you and you're feeling like you're not getting anything from it fully just do not watch my content about it do not engage with what i'm saying and where i'm coming from i think it's different for everybody and i'm not saying that there's necessarily any right or wrong you're going to find what works for you what strengthens you and that's part of the work that you have to do during a time like this is to figure out what your what your materials are. You know, you've got to choose your weapons, as it were. One of the forms of shadow work that it can be really difficult to do, I think, during a collective crisis like this is to figure out the balance between the difficult things you're feeling, the negative things that you're feeling, the fear, the panic, the uncertainty, the sadness, the overwhelm. And then, you know, how you're going to do your mindset shifts and look at things in a more empowering way and decide where is your agency and where can you take action? Because I think there's definitely got to be a harmony between those two things, right? So we can't afford to just scrub out all of the painful things we're feeling. We can't afford to ignore those emotions, but neither can we afford to live in the other direction where we're in this swamp of negativity all the time we're not allowing ourselves to be empowered when we're not figuring out what the next action needs to be if there's somebody in your life who is being super super negative during this situation they're not empowering themselves they're not thinking about where their agency lies they're feeling very nervous about things they're feeling very um, they're expressing negative emotion all the time instead of pasting over and plastering over their experience and kind of trampling their emotions by saying things like it will all be okay in the end you know you've got to find your power and you know addressing it that way probably one of the best things to do is just to acknowledge that what they are feeling is valid but then suggest like okay but what is the next thing to be doing so you know, for me, instead of saying everything happens for a reason or everything's going to be OK in the end or whatever, um, I think it's much more helpful to say, I know things are really tough right now, honey. And I know that this is a really difficult time. But let's think about where your agency is right now or let's think about something great that we can do today. Or, you know, let's talk about this thing that usually really uplifts you. So you're not trampling over that person's difficult emotional experience. But what you are saying is, okay that's real and that's valid and obviously you're feeling that way but let's not drop anchor there let's see what else we can bring in that's going to help or is going to empower you obviously it's not helpful to ceaselessly wallow in your negative feelings about this it's also not helpful to ceaselessly brush all the negativity under the rug and insist that everybody feels okay so if you're in a situation where you're dealing with somebody who's wanting you to deal with with this in a very toxic positive way they're insisting that you are always upbeat you're always optimistic you know maybe you can say to them depending on the nature of your relationship hey you know what it would be much better if you would acknowledge my feelings that I'm having, my trauma feelings, my anxious feelings. Um, I appreciate that you want to do something for me that you feel is empowering or you want me to feel a certain way that you think would be better for me. But it's really difficult for me when you brush my feelings under the rug in order to do that. And you don't need to do that. We can have a real honest conversation about the breadth of our emotions. And maybe you need to do that as well, you know, because very often a toxic positive person does need to feel and experience the breadth and range of their emotions. And they're not allowing themselves to do that. And therefore it feels very scary when somebody else starts doing that. <music>